I tell you, I really need to get back into the book of Amos. I have been belated on doing it. No need to share the excuses why. But moving back and working a lot has a lot to do with it. I'm getting reacclimated to my world, if you can understand that. But anyway, I'm going to share with y'all a pamphlet that was delivered to Sweden, to all the residents of Sweden in 2018 called If Crisis or War Comes. Now, in 2018, this was right before the plague germinated in the world. There are righteous governments that want to share with their people certain particular intelligence that they know that they can share with their people that they can glean from. Give them a heads up, so to speak. Now, this is sustenance for thought. Some of you may say, oh, America ain't gonna fall, ain't no war coming here. Well, you can think ignorantly like that if you'd like and be fundamentally unlearned to that notion. Or you can put it in your back pocket and hold on to this for when that time comes, you can be prepared mentally, physically, spiritually, whatever. But they sent these to their people. Swedes sent these pamphlets to the people. In 2018, they knew something or know something in order to go through the efforts involved in doing this, in, del in this delivery system of pamphlets. If crisis or war comes, they knew something. And it was right before the... Uh, the big plague kicked off. And I'll leave, uh, well, I'll try to leave in the description the PDF to this so you can read it in your own leisure. So what would you do if your everyday life was turned upside down? An emergency can result in society not functioning in the way we are used to. Climates can change, which may mean that flooding and forest fires become more common, and they have worldwide. Incidents in the rest of the world may result in shortages in certain foods. Disruptions to important IT systems may have an impact on the electricity supply. In just a short time, your everyday life can become problematic. The heating stops working. It becomes difficult to prepare and store food. The shops may run out of food and other goods. There is no water coming from the taps or the toilet. It is not possible to fill up your car. Payment cards and cash machines do not work. Mobile networks and the internet do not work. Public transport and other means of transport are at a standstill. It becomes difficult to obtain medicines and medical equipment. Think about how you and the people around you will be able to cope with a situation in which society's normal services are not working as they usually do. Be on the lookout for false information. States and organizations are already using misleading information in order to try and influence our values and how we act. The aim may be to reduce our resilience and willingness to defend ourselves. The best protection against false information and hostile propaganda is to critically appraise the source. Is the factual information, is it factual information or is it opinion? What is the aim of this information? Who has put this information out? Is the source trustworthy? Is this information available somewhere else? Is this information new or old? And why is it out there at this precise moment? Search for information. The best way to counteract propaganda and false information is to have done your homework. Do not believe in rumors. Use more than one reliable source in order to see whether the information is correct. Now, if you recall, when the when the plague first started to germinate worldwide, the WHO, the CDC, 
local health authorities worldwide did not have the same story. It was all opinions. Fauci one day said, masks don't work. The next week, wear a mask. The next week, no need for a mask. The next week, wear 30 masks. You see? Come on now. Not doubting that there is a a, a severe illness out there. I'm doubting the other stuff that comes with it. This pure speculation that's not science. That's just political propaganda. You see? If Sweden is attacked, resistance is required. We must be able to resist various types of attacks directed against our country. Even today, attacks are taking place against our IT system and attempts are being made to influence us using false information. We may also be affected by conflicts in our region. Potential attacks include cyber attacks that knock out important IT systems, sabotage of infrastructure, sabotage of roads, bridges, airports, railways, electricity, and such, terror attacks that affect a large number of people or important organizations, attempts to influence Sweden's decision makers, or its inhabitants. If Sweden is attacked by another country, we will never give up. All information to the effect that resistance is to cease is false. Learn to provide first aid. Okay, y'all can read that on your own. I'm just hitting the highlights here. Hold tight. Trying to load it up. And the reason for the brochure I'll read here is um, this brochure is being sent to all households in Sweden at the behest of the Swedish government. The Swedish Civil Contingencies Agency is responsible for this contents. The purpose of the brochure is to help us become better prepared for everything from serious accidents extreme weather, IT attacks, and military conflicts. Many people may feel a sense of anxiety when faced with an uncertain world. Although Sweden is safer than many other countries, there are still threats to our security and our independence. Peace, freedom, and democracy are values that we must protect and reinforce on a daily basis. Public authorities, county councils, and regions, municipalities, companies, and organizations are responsible for ensuring that society functions. However, everyone who lives in Sweden shares a collective responsibility for our country's security and safety. When we are under threat, our willingness is to help each other is one of our most important assets. If you are prepared, You are contributing to improving the ability of the country as a whole to cope with a major strain. Uh, Your municipality is responsible for ensuring that services including care of the elderly, the water supply, fire and rescue service, and schools continue to function. Even in the event of a societal emergency... As a private individual, you also have a responsibility. Preparing correctly can enable you to cope with a difficult situation, regardless of what has caused it. In the event of a societal emergency, help will be provided first to those who need it most. The majority must be prepared to cope on their own for some time. What is most important is that you have water, food, and warmth and you are able to obtain information from the authorities and the media. You also need to be able to make contact with relatives. There are checklists. Okay, you can read those checklists. That's significant. You also need to be able 
to make contact with relatives. I take that as loved ones and close family that doesn't turn on you and friends. So, hey, you know what? I've pondered the thought. I'm all about community. Get 40, 50 acres of land. Everybody get out there and pool your money together. Work. Throw up some modulars. Plant acreage, acreage, acreage of gardens. Raise your meat, your animals. Live community. Community living. I'm all about that. So I'll leave, uh, I'll do my best if uh, I can figure it out. Um, I'll read one more thing. Heightened state of alert. The government can decide to put the country on a heightened state of alert in order to improve Sweden's chances of defending itself. In a heightened state of alert, peacetime laws apply. But other laws may also be used. For example, the state can requisition private property that is of particular importance to Sweden's total defense. In a heightened state of alert, the whole of society has to gather its collective forces in order to ensue that which is most important of functions. In a heightened state of alert, you may be called up to help in various ways. Information about the heightened state of alert will be broadcast on radio and TV. Well, if the power's out, you know, the likelihood of that is slim. So I'll leave I'll leave this in the link if I can. There's some other stuff in here on sheltering and protective spaces and uh, things like that. Okay? So, you know, use what I just said as a grain of salt or use it as knowledge, as the capabilities are there for any nation to fall. And that is the truth. There's an entire historical record of it in the Bible. It's inevitable. It will happen to every country eventually. Till next time.